99, one step closer to 600. But uh, I'm, I'm joined today by Kate Constable. She's a sports journalist. Um, she's really talented, inspiring, and um, obviously uh, she covers a lot of sports. She, she's come from Northwestern University, and I'm really looking forward to this interview. But before we get to that, um, congrats on your new opportunity with uh, Rashad Phillips, Mac, and uh, Zach on, uh, on the NBA Draft Show. Um, so congrats on that. And uh, how are you and your family doing so far and during the substitute? During the well, yeah, well, thank you so much. I'm excited um, to do our show next week. You guys will all have to tune into that. It's on SUV TV. Um, we're covering the draft, so it'll be a lot of fun, a lot of moving pieces already. Um, going on with that so and some exciting stuff um, I'm also excited to be your 599th person that's amazing yeah uh, I can't believe you've interviewed that many people that's wild yeah so I, I actually I, um, I just finished up another interview before you uh, 598 with uh, wi uh, Washington Wizards assistant coach uh, Alex McLean so he, oh that's awesome did he give you any inside scoop on what the Wizards are going to do in the draft he gave me actually um, he's been working He's been working with uh, John Wall a lot uh, during okay. the – he said he's ready to come back and he's 100% healthy. So that's, that's a great uh, inside scoop. But he didn't yeah, that's great. He didn't tell me anything about the draft, but, um, but he just told me about the players, like uh, John Wall, Bradley Beal, and what to expect. That's it pretty much. And after you, tonight, uh, my 600th episode will be Darrell Armstrong, the Mavericks assistant coach. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be sandwiched in between the two of those guys. <laughs> But uh, um, I, the reason why I brought you on here because um, you have an inspiring background and um, I want everyone to see your story. So uh, where you came from and how hard you worked to get where, to get where you're at right now. But when did you get interested in the sports industry and um, who was your biggest influencer in that? Um, well, I grew up my whole life playing sports my brother and I are like 16 months apart and so I actually do all my swinging sports lefty because he's a lefty and so I grew up using his golf clubs and his hockey sticks and batting um, uh, lefty the same way he did so that's kind of where my love for sports stemmed was just doing a lot of things with him um, and then I enjoy talking and I always enjoyed like giving speeches in college and standing up in front of the class and so I kind of figured I'd put the two together and and try out the broadcast industry um, I got my undergrad at the University of Iowa and straight out of school, I worked as a anchor at a local um, station in Minnesota, in, uh, Southern Minnesota, very small town, Austin. Oh, wow. um, and I was the weekend anchor, sports anchor there, which was a lot of fun. I learned a ton. It was kind of one of those experiences where you're just a one man band. You go out and you take your camera and you shoot and you edit and you write all your content, produce your shows, and then you anchor it. So um, I learned a ton in that first year, and then um, I didn't love living in the small town, um, and so I decided to get out of the industry, actually, and mm -hmm. I moved to Chicago and worked in PR for five years, which was kind of a huge change, um, and then through that, one of my clients was the Big Ten Conference, and so through that, we went to media days and interviewed players there and at, at the Big Ten tournaments, and um, I kind of realized I missed reporting a lot. I kind of got to use some of those skills again. And, and I realized that that was something that I really missed and kind of wanted to try, try it again and see if I could um, get back in the industry and, and not take the small town path route. Nothing against that. I mean, again, I learned so much in that job and it was awesome. Um, I just love large cities. So I love Chicago and living here, um, but thought I would try it again. And so I decided to go back to school and went to Northwestern and got my master's there, learned from a ton of great professors, um, Bill Handy, Jay Adonde, Melissa oh, wow. Isaacson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were so awesome. Um, learned so much from them. Um, and they, I mean, they were people that really inspired me too, even just learning from them and and hearing kind of their stories and, and the paths that they took and, and then learning the skills that they used to be so successful. I mean, that was, that was really inspiring to me. Um, and so that's kind of where we are now, kind of my journey up and down. It's, it's a very unconventional one, I realize, but um, it's been a fun one. I mean, learning from Jay Adonde, and that's, that's awesome. You know, he's one of the yeah. best in the, in the business. Um, but uh, who did you look up to while growing up uh, as a sports journalist or a sports reporter? 
Um, I don't honestly, someone asked me this question the other day and I don't know if there was anyone in particular that I looked up to. Um, I would go to Timberwolves games when I was younger, growing up in Minnesota. Um, that's where I spent most of my life. Um, and I would go with my dad and I would always watch the, the all, everyone on press row. And I thought that that was like the coolest job was to sit yeah. on press row and be able to write about the game and go interview the players after. So that's more of, um, kind of who influenced me versus a specific reporter or host or analyst or anything like that. It was just those experiences of like seeing it in real life and kind of thinking that that's really cool. That could be a career. Um, so that's kind of where my inspiration stems from again, more so than, than a specific person. Hmm. So, um, obviously, uh, you went to Northwestern. So what was it like the atmosphere, like, uh, covering Northwestern sports and obviously you went there as a student, but, um, especially Northwestern football is an upcoming team and, uh, mm -hmm. basketball, even basketball too. So what, what's the atmosphere like, uh, at, at Northwestern? Um, it was great. I mean, some of those football games that year were awesome. Um, I think we went to the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, the season, because I was, the program was just one year. So I was only there for a year, but I think that was the year we went to the Big Ten Championship. I covered it regardless. I can't remember if I was in school or not. Um, but that was so awesome. And I mean, just to see how excited and proud those Northwestern fans were. Um, and then you get someone like Fitz and, and Chris Collins, two guys who are just stand-up guys that are the best in the business. And they, they treat the media really well. They understand that we have a job to do just as much as they have a job to do. And they respect that and get it. Um, and so being a young journalist, they were really comfortable people to interview and kind of, I don't want to say practice my skills, but like to be a young journalist, I mean, to go and, and talk to a yeah. Nick Saban or someone like that, like that can be kind of scary. So, yeah. I mean, even though they are highly regarded coaches, they were just very nice people, um, which made it, made it easy. So overall, I mean, basketball, football, even, um, women's basketball, uh, field, field hockey. I don't know if I covered field hockey, soccer, um, a lot of those girls on the soccer team were awesome. Got to know some of them. So, I mean, just all around, just a great atmosphere at that school. Yeah. So, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Mike Greenberg is a Northwestern fan, right? Or, yes. Yeah, Alumni. So, yes. Yeah. So, uh, did you ever get to connect with him also when you were there? You know, he came to the school once, um, when I was there and, uh, my parents were in town that weekend visiting me. And so I didn't get to go see him. I, I, I debated leaving them at breakfast and, and heading down Northwestern to hear him talk. Um, but I opted to stay and hang out with them because they don't get to make it here that much. So, um, I didn't, we got to talk to Mike Wilbon came, he's an alumni as well. He came to talk to one of our classes and that was, again, just, it's just really great to see that like as you're sitting in a classroom like this is what you could become i mean this is what hard work gets you is someone like mike wilbon who is yeah. widely known who's on tv every day like people love him they trust his opinion um and so more so than like any advice that they give it's just like understanding that like you can get to that point with hard work and determination and persistence and and things like that so i'm just i'm just curious i gotta ask you this because um, at all out of the people I've interviewed on my podcast, I say the next day I see them on TV. Hey, I say, I always say to myself or my friends, I interviewed them the, the day before. So yeah. how, did you have that instance where, where you interviewed a person, you see him on TV and the next day and say, I interviewed him uh, yesterday. <laughs> huh. I'm trying to think, I'm sure there is. Um, Not that I can think of off the top of my hand. Um, when I was an undergrad, I interned at um, Turner Sports and worked with the um, NBA TV guys. And so those are um, guys every year that I, I watch throughout the season and as the draft comes around and things like that. And I see the studio and I kind of, um, I had a very, as an intern, I had a very small part in what they did, um, helped kind of edit things and, and write notes for, um, on different players, things like that. So a very small part, but I still, every time I watch that, I kind of feel like, oh, I know those guys I've been there. Um, and so it's cool to see them on TV. Yeah. So actually I'll give you an example real quick. So I had, uh, I interviewed Jay Harris on my show from ESPN and Anita yeah. Collins. Um, and I, and the next day I saw Jay Harris, Jay Harris on TV. So I Instagram messaged him. I interviewed you yesterday. You're already on TV, back on TV. You said, yeah. <laughs> you said back on the grind. Yeah, busy guys. It, it, it never stops. <laughs> so uh, my next question to you, obviously, 
it's it's important to network with people in this generation and obviously uh, with the stuff we're going through uh, with the coronavirus and other things. And for you, how grateful is it just to be uh, connected with all these other sports reporters, journalists, and where they can, and all of you guys can share your stories and give advice to each other and, um, and then make connections and obviously do shows together too. What's it like that, to have that? Yeah, I mean, it's been really fun, especially like you said, in the, during this time and in quarantine, um, even getting to know Zach and Max, who we'll be doing the show with next week. Super excited. I haven't even met those guys in person, but we've been talking and kind of bouncing ideas off each other. Um, and so to, even just to see their content, I mean, it's kind of inspiring, like seeing them, watching them put out new content each week. I mean, it's, it kind of keeps you going and keeps you motivated. I've also had had a couple other people reach out to me within the last week on on um, Twitter and even ask like, hey, can you listen to my show and rate it? And, and not that I'm anyone special to be the one rating it, but it's just they're up and coming too. And I mean, I said the same thing. I said, yeah, can I shoot you some of my stuff to look over and, yeah. and just get your take on it? Just because we're all kind of in the same boat and, yeah. and networking is, is a huge part of this business and how you move forward. And so um, it's been it's been fun to see other people's content, kind of to see how creative people can get when we're all locked in our homes and, and not much to do. Um, yeah, so just very, very inspiring and also just kind of fun to make new friends and new contacts, even if it is via social media. Yeah, speaking of Rashad Phillips, I had him. I actually I interviewed him uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. He came on my show in the beginning of the pandemic. Rashad is he know he's knowledgeable. He knows his stuff. Obviously played in the league um, and uh, he. <laughs> When it comes to the NBA stuff, man, he knows it. He knows it. So you, he does. You got, you, you're in good hands with all three of them. So yes, uh, I am. I'm just. I'm hoping I know my stuff well <laughs> enough not to let those guys down on Wednesday because they are very talented and very intelligent when it comes to the game. Yeah. So I, I want to. I, obviously, I'm going to ask you about that show. But um, take me back to your first opportunity uh, uh, where you got to cover um, a, a, like a sporting event, and then uh, your first interview you've done. Well, a lot of my first interviews were, were with high school teams and high school players, um, which was a really good way to start because again, like as a young reporter, yeah. you have some of those nerves. And so um, talking to high school kids is, I mean, I was only a couple of years older than them at that point. I had just finished college. So that was easy, but they're also um, really good people to learn interview um, tactics and, and kind of learn how to be a good interviewer because a lot of times high school kids, you know, you put a camera in their face and they're not used to that. So they're a little timid and kind of give you really short answers. And so it helps to really draw those, um, those, those responses out of them and kind of learn how to do that. I think one of my first really big interviews um, was Paul Molitor. He came through um, the, the small town I was in. Um, through the twins caravan that year. And so he was the first like really big name I interviewed. Um, and then throughout kind oh, of my wait. career. Say oh, again? Oh, sorry. Is that the, was that the former twins manager? Yes. Oh, okay. And he played for the team as well. He spent a lot of years in the majors. Um, so that, that was a cool interview. Um, I'm trying to think of who else that it's kind of been fun. Um, I interviewed Kevin McHale this oh, past wow. summer, That's which awesome. was really great. He was, super nice really just kind of down to earth normal humble guy um and yeah so I mean it's you still kind of have that wow factor of like oh my gosh I can't believe I'm talking to this person but I always do try and approach those interviews just as like you know we're just gonna sit down and have a conversation and they're yep. normal people too and yep. and as calm the more calm I can be during the interview and composed the better the interview is gonna go so you know, you get excited a little bit, but try and keep it in perspective that it's just, just a conversation. Like for me, I'm like the go, uh, go with the flow type of person where I don't need to write down questions. Uh, I just come up with the questions on top of my head because I already, obviously I do research on Google to find out what they, what they, um, uh, what else they do. Um, yeah. but when it comes to these athletes, I already know because I'm obviously I'm a big sports fan and, um, and I, uh, and some of them, most of them, uh, play for my favorite team. So I already know about them and, that makes it easy. Um, yeah, but I, I'll give you like example about being persistent. Uh, like for me, uh, it, I had Isaiah Thomas on my show, the former Pistons, and yeah, he that took me four months to get done, and his daughter helped me out with that actually. And shout oh, out, wow. to, yeah, shout out to his daughter for that. But uh, he came on my 25th birthday, and uh, that was an honor. And um, yeah, it, that's how you, you got to be patient, especially being pa being you have to be patient in this business. Yeah, in order, in order the. Per 
in order to get the interview you want, you got to be patient. And I, I, I was patient with them and she finally reached out to me saying, let's do it. And, and there you go. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, persistence pays off. Yeah. And I think I sent you guys my interview with him too. So yes. I have yet to check that out, but I promise I will. I've been busy kind of this week prepping for next week, but yeah. I will I will definitely take a look at that because he was a he was a great player back in the day. Yeah. So um I'll, so now I want to get to your show and uh well, how did this come about and did Rashad reach out to you guys or did you guys have this already in the works? Yeah, so Rashad and I do some work together um within the high school grassroots um area. He um we do a podcast with Alec Kinski, who is the founder of theseasonticket.com, um, which is a, is a new up and coming website that um, covers grassroots basketball. It's kind of the um, ESPN-ish of that space. Mm -hmm. um, and so Alec, Rashad, and I do a podcast for that. And we were supposed to do it last year and kind of really launch it last year, but with the pandemic and tournaments getting shut down, uh, we didn't get a chance to do that. So we, you guys can all look for that coming up, hopefully this year. Um, but so that's how I got to know Rashad. And he puts on this show each year. And well, I think last year was his first year doing it. Um, and it went really well and they want to do it again this year. And he was looking for someone to host it. And so just our relationship through um, that podcast uh, is kind of what sparked that. And he reached out and said, would you mind coming down and, and hosting that with me? We're going to put together a good crew of people to kind of um, break down the, the picks and, and players and talent there. And so I, of course, said, yeah, why not? That'd be fun. Hmm. So uh, obviously, uh, next week is the draft and um, a lot of intriguing prospects I like in this draft. And um, also after that, it's NBA free agency. I, I, that's what I'm really looking forward to NBA free agency. That's what, that's when all the craziness happens. And that's that has been pretty wild. Yeah. So, but yeah. so for your show, uh, where can people tune in or listen to or watch it? Uh, where can, where, where can they find yes, it? Yes. It will be streaming live on suvtv.com. So you can go there. Um, I'm sure there'll be, it'll be on the front page or there'll be a link to it. However, um, however it works to then get to the show, but that's where it'll be streaming. That's where people can check it out. And I encourage people to, because um, Rashad, Zach, Max, Daryl Berry, I mean, all these guys are super intelligent basketball minds and it's a different type of content than you'll get from going to like an ESPN or a Fox or yeah. CBS or anything like that. Um, a little bit more in-depth breakdown of the players and, and, I mean, you get it straight from a guy like Rashad, who's got a great basketball mind. I can already tell that you guys are going to be better than Bill Simmons, Jay Billis. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure about that, but uh, we're going to try. Those those guys are pretty talented. Uh, I have I have tons of respect for both of them with, for what they do. But um, so my next question, so for so for you guys, and obviously you guys have to have the the uh, players down for the draft. So for you, I'm going to ask you, what is the most intriguing prospects that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, obviously, explain to me like the top, the first uh, top five picks. Well, I mean, this draft is so interesting because there's not like a clear cut top five. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of what everyone thinks, you know, everyone has their own, their own thought, their own opinion on who's going to go top five. Um, I'm really interested to see where Lamella goes. I know that's kind of the hot topic. Um, I think he's a fantastic passer. I think he can run an offense really well, um, but I'm not sure he's going to go number one. And yeah. so he's kind of been bouncing around from, from being a number one, number two pick to then people said he's sliding a little. So we'll see where he falls there. Um, Aneka Kangu from USC. I really like that kid. I love the way he plays defense. He works hard um, the whole game. Um, I'm also interested in guys like Terrell Terry, um, Killian Hayes, um, Devin Vassell, mm -hmm. some of those shooters. Um, I'll be interested to see where they go. Um, and it'll tell a lot about the direction teams are headed by who they take. And, and I mean, there's so many guards in this, in this draft class, um, but that's just an intriguing aspect to me. So I'm not sure I can give you my top five, that's but right. um, James Wiseman's up there. And, and then, up yeah, there. Was, yeah. James Wiseman's going to be a really good player. I could see Obi Toppin going in the top five. Um, Denny Abdi. Avdia, I got to get his name right. Uh, I really like him. He's kind of a do-it-all guy, and he's ready. Got an NBA-ready body, and um, I think he looks—he looks like a pretty good prospect for any team. They'd be lucky to have him. 
And uh, also Anthony Edwards from Georgia. He's yes. Yes. I think he'll, I think he'll be a top three for sure. If not well, top three. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a New York Knicks fan. So we have the eighth pick. Uh, but uh, I think I've been hearing rumors that they might trade up to two uh, if they can't find anyone at eight. But um, if if somehow we stay at eight, uh, there's a couple of players. I mean, two one player I really I'm really intrigued by Cole Anthony from North mm. Carolina. I feel like he can fit in New York, and he's a, he has a mentality. He can uh, he he has he's not gonna he loves the pressure in my opinion because he obviously played for North Carolina and Coach Williams. So I feel like he won't have any trouble to play in, in the bright lights and uh, in the Madison Square Garden. Um, but for if for for you, um, if Lamelo Ball somehow drops and if he's still there with Cole Anthony at eight, who if the Knicks are stuck in that position, who would he take, Lamelo or Cole Anthony? If Lamelo, I'm not saying he's going to drop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Lamelo, so like, I would I would venture to guess they would probably take Lamelo. Um, I, I'm really high on Cole Anthony too. I think he's got a pretty good game. I mean, he's like a lethal scorer. He's, he's kind of a, he's always looking to score and, and he can hit those big shots for you. Um, I think LaMelo in New York would be really interesting just because, I mean, this is a kid who already has his own reality show. He's got 5.5 <laughs> million followers on Twitter. I mean, what yeah. screams New York more than things like that. Um, and I think New York could kind of use some of that excitement and hype and kind of to get fans their fan base needs to um, rally around them and, and they need to find something that kind of gets their fans back into um, rooting for them. And I think Lamelo might be able to do that a little bit more than Cole Anthony, even though I think um, Cole Anthony is definitely an NBA ready guy. I think he can contribute on any team, um, but I would probably say Lamelo there. Hmm. So um, obviously the draft, we're, <laughs> the draft is going to be different this year, uh, virtual, I think. And um, I think some fans will be there. I don't know yet, but, uh, how how is it going to see be like not seeing these players in the uh, in the green room or uh, this year? Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for him. I know it's kind of it's how the I mean the NHL had to do it and NHL yeah NHL um, yeah. NFL. I mean yeah. that was that was kind of the tester of of if the uh, virtual draft could really work. Oh, the WNBA too. W that was the one that I was thinking of. WNBA yes. Um, and I feel bad for these guys. I mean, this is a huge moment for all these kids and they've worked so hard for their whole lives and they get to this point and, and they have to kind of sit on their couch with their family. I mean, that's not being around family is great, but I mean, you want those bright lights of, of being in New York and shaking Adam Silver's hand when you cross the stage and all of that. So um, I feel for them. I think, um, I mean, I think these other leagues have pulled it off, off just fine, but it also will be interesting as viewers for people at home watching. I mean, you're not going to get the, the Knicks fans booing when their pick comes up and, and all those kind of quirky things that happen with the draft, those traditions. Um, so it'll definitely be a different, a different year, but I mean, Hey, if you're, if you're picked to go to the NBA, I think regardless of where, where that pick happens, um, I think you're going to be pretty excited. Yeah, for sure. And um, obviously you, um, you guys are obviously going to cover NBA free agents too after the draft, but um, I'm really looking – because there's, there's a lot, a lot of ru trade rumors going out there with Westbrook, um, Westbrook, Westbrook James Harden, uh, Zach Levine. And, I mean, don't, don't be surprised if we see big trades happening in the draft this year. You can, I, I can see some big, big trades happening this, in this draft, and that's how it's going to dictate what teams do. But what, do you, what are you most looking forward to uh, free agency-wise when it comes to trading? And, obviously, the free agent market is not that um, – it's, it's, it might not be that big, but you, because it, we expect Anthony Davis to go back to the Lakers, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Giannis, I think he's going to stay, but he can still leave. I don't know about that one. But what do you, what do you think of the trade market so far, the heating, uh, heating up? I mean, yeah. I mean, even today, the rumors of Westbrook wanting to go to the Knicks or at least wanting out of Houston, CP3 possibly going to the Suns, things like that. I even heard, I think – um, this afternoon, I also heard Westbrook to Charlotte. Yeah. So I think draft night is going to be pretty crazy. I think we're in for a wild ride in just in terms of it's not going to be, I mean, teams are going to be moving around all night. Um, free agency class, I think it's a little bit weaker than ones in the past, just because like you said, AD is going back to the Lakers. Um, I think uh, watching where Christian Wood falls, if he decides to leave, I think that'll be an interesting one. He had a really great year last year. Um, so honestly, I, there's like so much going on that I'm like, I don't really know where everyone's going. It, it's just kind of waiting to see where the chips fall. And, um, but it makes for an exciting year. It makes for an exciting draft. And then also, I mean, so much going on. There's 
the NBA is packing so much into these last few weeks of off season before the season starts in December. So as a basketball or NBA fan, I mean, you just kind of have to love all the action and everything going on. I mean, each, every, I mean, my phone just lit up here with, you know, more alerts and things like that. So it's like every couple hours, I feel like something's happening in the league, which is pretty exciting. You got exciting. What? You got some breaking news? <laughs> I don't have any breaking news. I have some Twitter stuff, but uh, no breaking news, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to this. But w when it comes to Giannis, um, do you see him leaving this year or staying with them uh, for one more year just to see how they do? And, obviously, there's been, they've been linked to James Harden and Chris Paul, uh, the mm -hmm. Bucks. But um, do you think, obviously, they need to make a trade to, to entice Giannis that they're doing, they're doing something for him? Um, but if it doesn't work out, I mean, do you see, do you see him leaving this year possibly? Possible. I mean, after this, after this following year? No, no, this year, this free agent market. No, because I don't think he's a free agent this year, is he? Oh, Do I no. have that wrong? I mean, uh, he has, I think he has one more year left, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, even then, I think this year is really important for the Bucks because I think it's kind of like a win-now type of year. Otherwise, Giannis might want to jump. I mean, I, I kind of see him staying there, and I see the Bucks trying to bring in another piece to kind of help him out. Um, but I think this year is really important for them just in terms of, Kind of it's now or never, otherwise you run the risk of losing him. But I I have a feeling he's gonna stay. Things I've I've read and learned and whatnot that kind of tells me he might stay. But again, I mean who knew LeBron was gonna leave when he did and the way he yeah. did and things like that. So I mean anything can kind of happen with those big names. Yeah. So um I want to get to an important topic, uh women in sports. So what's it like seeing yourself and um, all these other women reporters covering the sports they love and getting more opportunities and also women coaching male sports like for example Becky Hammond the Spurs assistant coach I'm I'm really pulling for her to be the first female in the NBA I want her I want her to coach so bad he's she's really smart she's intelligent um, she is inspiring and she can be a hell of a coach in the NBA and I, I really believe that I've been telling people on social media let's pull for her to be the first female coach in the NBA so What's it like seeing all these women getting more opportunity? Yeah, no, I think it's great. I am a huge fan of Becky Hammond as well. Yeah. I think she's a fantastic coach. I think she could easily take on the role of an NBA head coach. Um, but just as far as being a female, I mean, it's, it's, it's having people like Becky Hammond um, is inspiring because, I mean, who would have thought 10, 15 years ago that there would be a woman coaching in the NBA, you know, let alone being a potential head coach someday soon. Um, so that's just really inspiring seeing those people. Um, I think females in the industry have kind of, it's, it, it used to be kind of a thing where, you know, girls were catty and, you know, you're all fighting for an X amount of jobs. And, and now it's evolved into more of a women in the industry build each other up and you see someone having success and doing great and you encourage them and you learn from them and, and, um, we've all kind of really rallied around each other and, and supported each other in that way. Um, Laura Oakman, who is a um, NFL reporter for Fox, she has built this galvanized um, community with so many young female reporters, um, not even reporters, just females that want to be in the sports industry um, in any aspect. Um, and I was lucky enough to be a part of that a couple of years ago and have made some great friends from that. Um, and so she's just been a huge person in, the younger generation and, and young women my age kind of flipping that switch to understand that like, hey, we're all on the same team. I mean, we're all fighting for the same jobs, but like we can learn from each other. We can encourage each other. We can cheer each other on. Um, your success is my success because, you know, if, if there's more women in the industry and more women taking on bigger roles, I mean, that just opens doors for um other women to come in or the next generation or, or things like that. So I think sports is doing a really good job. I think we still have a ways to go in terms of um, women really having a, a, I don't want to say main large role, but a larger role than they do right now, whether it's on the sidelines or um, on the sidelines with a team, with an organization and a front office. Um, but I think those things are all things that are um, becoming more possible and, and, People are really looking to women more to fill um, roles that they didn't look to them to fill before, which is really, um, really great. Yeah, Laura, Ar Laura Oakman, she's another uh, great one in the business. And also Laura Rutledge, she's one of my favorites. Laura Rutledge is fantastic. Uh, I'm a big fan of Laura. She does yeah. a great job. 
actually I reached out to her to come on the podcast. She sees my messages, but uh, she's been busy, obviously. But she's uh, very busy. <laughs> I'm hoping at some point she can come on. But um, but when I out like out of all the women reporters I had on, I had on my show. I keep telling them they remind me of Laura Rutledge and you remind me of Laura Rutledge too. Oh, well, so. thank you. That's a compliment. Cause I think she's, I think she's great at her job. <laughs> yeah. She's one of the, I, I, I'll put her up against anyone right now, Laura Rutledge and mm -hmm. I mean, even Laura Oakman and Maria Taylor's another Maria one. Taylor's great. Called. I was going to say her. I love watching her. I think she does a really nice job. Taylor Rooks is another one. You name, you can name all everything. Anita Collins, who I had on my show, she's another one. Yeah. It's just amazing what I'm seeing such inspiring stories out there too so yeah um, even have women calling nfl games now yeah. hannah storm yep. um i mean calling those on i think it's amazon prime i mean just the fact that that's even a platform and an opportunity for women to to do that is really great even uh, uh woman referees now too and then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah so uh, what advice would you give these young kids or young athletes uh that are trying to reach to their goal um, I would say, you know, it's not an easy road, but nothing worth having is easy. I mean, um, I would, I would say enjoy the journey. I mean, it's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. It might not even happen in, in, in a couple of years and five years. It might be, I mean, I've been in and out of the industry, but it's almost been 10 years and I'm still, um, climbing to where I would like to be or striving to get there. Um, and so, but if, if you don't, enjoy what you're doing in that process. It's going to be a really long road. Um, and so I would say just enjoy the little things. You might be cutting highlights. You might be writing scripts for other people. You might be editing graphics or things like that. And, and where you want to see yourself on camera, but that's not quite where you are now, but, but that's all part of the process, um, in getting there. And I think one thing, um, I've kind of go back to is, is something that I think Kobe said it on his Jersey retirement night. And I want to say he was talking to his girls and he said, like, the process is the dream. I mean, that's being able to do that, being able to wake up every morning and know you have something to work for and working for that. It's not the dream the, winning the championships. Isn't the dream. The dream is, is everything it takes to get there and proving to yourself that you can and, and testing your limits and things like that. So um, this industry is not an easy one to work in, whether, you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, on, on a team, um, coaching staff. I mean, none of that is easy, but there's so many industries like that. And I would just say, be patient, be consistent, um, you know, build relationships. That's a huge thing is, is building relationships. I mean, a lot of it is who you know, and, and not always just reaching out and asking someone for something, but reaching out because you want to know how they're doing or letting them know that you saw them on TV the other night and they did a great job and you, you really enjoyed you know, their pregame show or things like that. And so um, I think relationships, that is, is a huge part of it and, and building those. And it honestly just makes, it makes work more fun when you get to work with people you, you like and you enjoy and get to watch their success. Um, that's a pretty cool part of it. I mean, for me, you can already tell I'm a hustler. So I'm, I'm, I'm you are, I'm, I can tell that. Yeah. I mean, 599, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, now I do this uh, segment called the rapid fire segment with all my guests that come on the show. You ready for this? Uh, oof, I think so. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? Oh, Kevin Hart. Uh, favorite football team, favorite basketball team, favorite uh, baseball team, or and favorite hockey team? Twins, Timberwolves, Bears, Blackhawks. Wow. I know Minnesota and, and Chicago kind of that's yeah, not a good mix. Same People aren't gonna like that, but <laughs> those are my teams. Yeah, I'm a Cowboys fan, Dallas Cowboy fan, New York Knicks, Rangers, Yankees fan. Okay. Yeah. Got uh, the New York sports covered. Yeah. Uh, favorite uh, favorite food? Ice cream. <laughs> uh, I don't have to think about that one. <laughs> um, so outside of the outside of journalism, what else do you like to do? Um, I enjoy working out. I enjoy cooking. I find cooking very therapeutic. It's kind of like a nice way to end my, end my days. Um, love hanging out with friends, my family. I have some adorable nieces and nephews that I try and get back to Minnesota and spend as much time with them as I can. So kind of cliche answers, but um, that's what kind of occupies a lot of my time outside of work and sports. So obviously you're a Timberwolves fan. So what do you expect them to do at the number one pick? 
<laughs> I, I don't know. They're, they kind of just crush me every year. I'm hoping they can get back to being in the playoffs or contending in some aspect. Um, I think they go either Anthony Edwards or LaMelo at number one, or I think they trade out of that um, if they get a good enough offer. Um, but I'm not quite sure not quite sure what they would do beyond that. Um, kind of trying to trying to figure that out. But I, I think LaMelo goes number one with it to the Wolves, which is yeah. interesting. They have they have D'Angelo Russell kind of, um, you know, is that counterintuitive? Yeah. But I think those guys could, could work. I've been, um, I've been hearing a lot of Zach Levine rumors coming back to Minnesota. Mm. So that's a hot take right there. I, I'm obviously um, I'm in, on Twitter somewhere. I've been hearing rumors that Zach Levine, Zach Levine, they're, they're interested in bringing him back. Okay. Well, if that happens, you, you said it here first. <laughs> I don't, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but I'm just saying <laughs> um, that's a, interesting because Zach Levine is right. It's a most improved player in my opinion. When he yeah. In Chicago and then, Obviously, in Minnesota, he's, um, he was young and developing, and now he can – if you bring him back, then he's a really established star in the league, mm -hmm. and, and he can shoot the ball. So, I feel like I – think, I think, in my opinion, I think the Timberwolves should go that route, bring an established player back instead of going for a rookie because you never know how, how that's going to pan out. So that's if you, true. If you have D'Lo and you have Zach Ali and you have Carl Anthony Downs, think about it. That's a, I mean, that's a pretty lethal that's, that's, um, big three right there. Yeah. Much better situation to have than having a rookie come in. And um, obviously these are established rookies, but I would rather have the – Still, rookie nonetheless, you're still learning a new – kind of how to play in a new league and whatnot, so. Yeah, so I've been, I'm just hearing rumors about it, so I don't know. But um, – Okay. I'll <clears> keep an eye out for that. Yeah. So my next question is um, – what what is what is your overall thoughts on the bubble season and how and what and Adam Silver did a fantastic job with that. So. Yeah, I think the NBA did a great job with that. I mean, from keeping the players healthy, keeping the staff healthy, keeping even like all the workers within the bubble healthy, um, and then just coordinating like. I mean, I read like guys were getting like refrigerators delivered there. I mean, uh -huh. all the deliveries that all these players are getting. I mean, in order to just coordinate all of that, um, especially with TV deals and, and bringing in reporters and things like that. I think the NBA just did a really great job um, setting that all up, executing all of that. I mean, there's so many moving pieces that I think, I mean, I don't even realize. I think people watching on TV don't even realize kind of how much went into that. Um, but if you really stop and think about you know, every aspect of putting on a basketball game and then doing it inside a bubble where, you know, you can't be having people come in and out and, and, and leave and things like that. I mean, um, I think he did a great job and it was so awesome just to have sports to yeah. watch again and to be able to um, kind of get our minds away from everything else that was going on and to enjoy basketball. And I thought there were some great games in that. I loved watching the heat. Um, uh, those, I mean, Tyler Hero, uh, Duncan Robinson, some of those, stories and and watching their success I thought that that was a fantastic run that they had um and then LeBron obviously having another championship was pretty pretty special to see so um I thought overall that entire from start to finish um that entire bubble scenario was pretty cool hmm. also um actually I just have uh I just saw on Twitter that the Mavericks are interested in Zach Levine also oh okay yeah. So These are things I haven't heard, but I'm going to, as soon as we get off here, I'm going to go um, look those up and, and um, dig up what some information I can. Yeah, so on Twitter, they're saying Mavericks are interested in Zach Levine, Victor Oladipo, or some other star player they want to pair, okay. with, yeah, to pair with Przingis and Doncic. So that's, they're looking for a third star. What are they going to give up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. My next one is, what is your most memorable interview you've done and most memorable sporting event you've been to? Mm. Oh, actually, I think I did. I, I asked you about the interview already. But. Yeah, you asked me about the interview. Sporting event, I went to um, the Final Four in Minneapolis in early 2000s. I don't even know what year that was. I think Michigan State was in the Final Four. And I was really young. I think I was like 10 maybe. No, I would have been older than that. Well, however old I was, I was pretty young, but it was, I went with my dad and my brother. We sat, it was in the um, old Metrodome, I believe in, in Minneapolis. And I sat in like the very top row. I think we had our binoculars. Like it was, it was not a glamorous um, 
viewing experience, but it was just pretty cool to be there and to spend the time with my dad and my brother there. Um, that's something that I will, will always remember, um, just in terms of, I mean, I don't even remember what the teams were. I don't remember the outcome of the games, um, but being with those two and, and being able to just kind of be in that atmosphere and, and feel the energy in that arena at the time was pretty fun. So what was it like seeing uh, the city of, uh, city of L.A. being a title town with the Dodgers and the Lakers? And obviously been, they've been through a lot with the wildfires and the loss of Kobe. Um, but what was that like seeing that title? I mean, that town getting two championships in one year? Yeah, I mean, they deserve it. They, like you said, they've been through a lot this year. And so, I mean, I would have loved to be living in LA at that time. That would be pretty fun. Um, unfortunately, they didn't get Lakers didn't get a parade or anything like that. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a, a bummer, I feel, for them in that, in that sense. But, um, I, I mean, how crazy is it that Teams from the same city and different leagues won at the same time. I mean, I'd have to think back to if that's even happened. Or I'm sure it has, but when the last time that was. So, I mean, yeah, with Kobe, with the wildfires, with that thing that 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 city has gone through, um, that community, it was it was it was really nice to see them win a little bit and see the Dodgers um, get out of their what 32 year drought, 35, 32, I think. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, so that was really fun. And the last few things here before I let you go, this is a question I've been bringing up to all my guests, obviously with the late Kobe Bryant, his daughter Deanna, and the rest of the people that were involved in the horrible crash. And he was one of my role models growing up. And I'm wearing a Girl, girl Dad shirt uh, today. Um, Love that. Shout out to Ellie Duncan for starting that movement and from ESPN. Yes, that was an awesome story. So do you remember where you were at that day and what did they mean to you? Yeah, I was sitting on my couch that day just watching. I don't even remember what I was watching. I think I was watching, it was a Sunday, so I think, I can't remember what I was watching. Oh. I was on my couch that day, um, and I got a text from a friend that said Kobe died, and I was like, no, nope, there's no way. Not, I don't believe it. Um, he's like, no, you got to check Twitter, and I was like, no, nope, Twitter is Twitter. You can't believe anything you see on Twitter, and I eventually logged on and that was that and I remember sitting on my couch the rest of the afternoon and I didn't move all day I watched um watched all the news coverage of it I mean I was just kind of paralyzed on the couch and and I I mean I grew up watching Kobe he wasn't an idol of mine I mean um I looked up to him as a basketball player but I I didn't he wasn't someone that if you asked me my favorite basketball player growing up I probably wouldn't have said Kobe but um what he meant to the game I mean his his life after basketball, everything he accomplished, just the kind of person he was, um, that kind of, I mean, that hit me pretty hard and, and just, I mean, under the circumstances and, and I feel for his girls and his wife and, and all of that. So just a lot of emotions that day. And even throughout the week, I remember, um, going to work and having, I mean, a bunch of TVs on in the office and all of it is, is Kobe stuff and watching that all day. And so, um, uh, it was a very emotional week. Um, and yeah, something that I will, like so many other people will never forget where I was or, um, when I heard all that. Yeah. Um, so before we get to the last thing, I forgot to ask you this, obviously there's a debate going on right now. Who's better LeBron or Jordan? So in your opinion, who's better LeBron or Jordan? Ooh. <laughs> um, I am going to go with Jordan. Ooh, yeah. I think, um, Honestly, after watching The Last Dance, that was a big turning point for me because, I, I mean, I, growing up, I grew up in the, in the 90s. I mean, I was young, but I mean, I was eight or nine when Jordan finished playing, so I didn't watch a ton of him. So I've grown up in this as LeBron's the MJ of my generation and all that. Um, so not watching um, MJ live and like kind of living that out with him, I kind of tended to toward to move towards LeBron um but I've watched a lot of him in the last year or so just I mean I've had a lot of time on my hands and things like that um with quarantine and so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with um with MJ there hmm. and the last thing here would you like to say anything to all the nurses doctors and essential workers right now say it again Oh, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and uh, essential workers? Yeah, just a huge thank you for everything that you are doing. Um, I mean, we get to 
sit in our homes and quarantine and be safe. And, and you guys are all out there on the front lines and working and just with so many things, whether it be political or the, um, the pandemic, I mean, there's just so much going on in the world um, today. And um, so many people are making an impact that kind of goes unnoticed. Two of my sisters are nurses and doctors. So they are um, at the hospital every day um, with um, patients swiping COVID tests. My sister sent me a um, picture early in the pandemic of her fully um, masked up and she's got the whole suit on and everything. Um, and so just a huge thank you to them for everything that they do and, and for keeping us all safe and, and as healthy as possible and, and being those heroes for us. Well said and shout out to your sisters. Um, tell them I said thank you. Thank you, I will. Uh, but um, there it is, episode 599 with sports journalist Kate Constable. Go follow on Twitter, Instagram, uh, yeah, fa yeah, Facebook and LinkedIn, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, all so, the above. Mm -hmm. Go follow her, she's really inspiring. She have a great story. Keep grinding, congrats on the show again with uh, Rashad, Max and Zach. I'm sure you, you guys are gonna kill it uh, on draft day. I'm sure I'm gonna be tuning in for sure. Yes, please uh, tune in. Yeah, and I Let us know what you think afterwards too. Yeah, I, I think I'm planning on doing a draft show with my other friends too. So okay. At the end, but um, I'm I'm definitely gonna be tuning in for you guys. Um, you you guys keep uh, keep working hard, and I'm sure we're gonna all we're, we're gonna connect again soon. And I'll be posting this on all social media formats so people see your story. Um, awesome. And you and your family stay safe, and uh, thank you again. Well, thank you, and and keep grinding out there. This is very impressive. Yeah, thank you. Enjoyed yeah. our conversation. Oh, uh, and tune in tonight, 600th episode with. Yes, Darryl. I will. Darryl. Congratulations! Darryl. Very yeah. exciting. Instagram Live, 7 p.m. Eastern. So. Okay, I'll be there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.